Hi guys, welcome back to Create a Frenzy. So, I have been YouTubing, what else? Um, watching YouTube videos, rather. And um, this is not new, but it has been around for a while. And I thought it was fun to create some of my own. So, um, Citrus Solve is usually the product that they use. But I found that this um, All Citrus Cleaner or it's a degreaser. You can get it at Home Depot, I believe, in Canadian Tire. It's by Stoner. Um, it's made 100% from citrus ex extract, and it is in a spray can. So this has been around for a while. My husband's had this, you know, in the basement on the shelf for a while, and I thought I'd try and play with it. My um, studio smells like oranges, but that's okay. It's fine. <laughs> um, and I thought I'd play and see if I could make some of my own uh, collage papers. So what I've done, I did go and buy, because I couldn't find any at my um, uh, thrift stores, I did go and buy one Ge National Geographic magazine. Um, they're not cheap. I must say. So I, I thought for the sake of this video, it would be an interesting experiment. So I tried it with the National Geographic. I tried it with um, another magazine I get in the mail. It's from the Food and Drink. It's from the LCBO. It works on that quite well. And then I tried some of the children's magazines. My daughter works at a library, so she brought home some of the uh, magazines that they don't they were going to throw out. So I figured I'd try it on that. So that is what we're doing. I've also used another product called Zep, which is basically the same as this, and I put it into a spray bottle. Um, it didn't work as well, but it wasn't bad. I'm thinking if I put it in a pour bottle, more something like with a pour spout, it would work better because you get more product on the paper. I think it would work better. But I didn't experiment with that. I didn't find these until later. So I figure, okay, we'll just do it this way. And then this was the best one to work with so what I did as you can see this is from National Geographic what I like about it again you know it, it gives you a different kind of look now National Geographic um, it has a lot of um, scenic pages you know pictures photographs things like that and you get some really interesting um, textures and um, different fading of the the colorant in the paper. Sometimes it doesn't work, which is okay. This is more of the uh, the Zep one, the one that I put into a spray bottle. Again, it wasn't a whole lot, so you can sort of see where it's taken some of the paint or some of the print ink away. And then this is one of those children's magazines. And you can see it did do it here, like where there was solid color um, um, ink and then here this was the Zep again the one that I decanted into a spray bottle um, it didn't work as well as I had hoped it has a different kind of effect so depending on what kind of effect you're looking for uh, it just like this one you know it, it it did it to some degree so if you look at some of this it's really interesting how some of it really um, took hold and really erased some of that ink. So this is the one uh, with the spray bottle. So I really like that whole speckled effect. So I could use this whole piece up here and see <clears throat> on the other side it didn't quite do much. But here again you can see in the sky part. So there's some real some things just didn't work and some things it did. So, I thought I'd play with these, but see how this did do some of it on here? I thought that was kind of cool. Here, maybe I'll show it to you like this. So, I like how <clears throat> it almost looks like, you know, when there, you see the, the film um, sort of melting in those videos, old-fashioned films. Um, that's what it sort of looks like to me. So, this is from the food and or the LCBO magazine, rather. I get this for free in the mail. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it, it works on here, too, which is quite nice. So it has a lot of interesting effects. So if you were really looking 
for a, a less expensive alternative or if you can't find any of the excuse me um, National Geographic's in your own um, backyard kind of thing you know in your own thrift stores then vintages that's the magazine so I get it for free through the mail and it works on that so try it see if you have the same um, effect but I like that the Vintages magazines, they have a lot of um, interesting pictures from around the world. So they do a lot of um, different countries and things like that. So you get some really cool looks with it. So it's basically you know, a cheaper alternative to um, some of the others. Especially if you don't have access to um, National Geographic. All right. So I just wanted to show them to you. So this is the cover of the magazine. So see how it's taken some of the print off. So you want a magazine that has lots of um, darker colors in behind. Or just colors in general. Because you get some really interesting effects. <clears throat> and I'm talking like this because... This is still a very strong orange smell. <laughs> and then this is um, with the cleaner, the degreaser. Okay. See how that really has that cool pooling effect. So it's just basically taking the ink off of your um, pages, which is really cool. So if you have some really interesting papers that you really like the look of, then that's the perfect way to do it. So some of these are better than others. Um, even the printed ones, you know, see how cool that is. It does give off on your fingers, though. Like, look at this. Isn't that cool? This is the National Geographic. This was an underwater picture, photograph. So I thought that was kind of cool. <clears throat> and then you just have lots of cool effects. It makes them look even more abstract than they really were, uh, were to begin with. So it's kind of nice to just play with these. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing today. <laughs> and we are seven minutes into me babbling. All right. We are going to take our art junk journal and we are going to do a double page spread with it. I don't know what we're going to do. Um, so, we shall wait and see. So what I'd like to do is just do a little spread. I like these blues. So you can just get a different color combination. There's a bunch of these. I like the blues and the yellows. So these are all underwater. So I think we'll just do, start with that and then go from there. So in this case, I am not going to use the whole page as is. What I like to do is just like to get to get my ruler out and I just start tearing um, just blocks of color basically. So as straight as you possibly can. I, I'm not always straight. But the beauty of this is that you can basically make a patchwork quilt out of paper. We're just collaging, really. And you can put it any which way you like. You can um, glue as you go, or you can do it um, all afterwards. I've never done this before. I thought it was kind of cool. I like the idea of making my own collage papers. Now, ideally, this would just be used um, on papers that, you know, were not bought <laughs> with money that uh, was expensive. You know, I mean, National Geographic's are gorgeous, but they're not cheap. Photography, you know, it's, it's becoming one of those lost art kind of things. So I'm willing to pay for it if I have to. That is not a big deal, but 
ideally you'd want to use paper that was, you know, recycled. But I'm using this anyway, so whether it's from a thrift store or I bought it, I'm still using it. I'm not just tossing it. Which is kind of nice. But see how you can just sort of do it in a very different abstract kind of way. So that's what we are doing. Okay, let's see. Kind of like this fish peeking out in this one. There's usually no rhyme or reason to a lot of these things. Um, a lot of my pages are just sort of, you know, created as I go kind of thing. I like being able to um, sort of fit things in wherever you feel like. Don't take it too seriously. And check the back of your papers. See if the back side is more interesting than the front. And sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. That's okay. Just trying different things. It can be a lot of fun. But then you get to play. And if you didn't want to use it on this kind of thing, then you can just set it aside for now. Or we can try something else. But making your shapes and sizes all a little bit different will create more abstract um, pages, which is what I like for backgrounds. So a lot of the times when I do my um, page layouts like this, I don't want to have too much structure to it. I just want it to be free flowing. It's just a background for now. And then later on I can fill in with something else or I can leave it as is. Just because it's a background doesn't mean it's not beautiful in its own way. You can butt these right up against each other or you can um, leave space. That's okay too. You can do it any which way you like. Um, I just really love the colors. Sometimes you get some really interesting effects when you lay them in different ways. And it's just playing with color and shapes basically at this point. Like if you like this side better, obviously you totally could use that. Now, when I was looking online for Citrusolve, I couldn't get it here in Canada. I don't know. And shipping was not cheap, so I decided to look for different alternatives. And I came across um, Zep, first of all, which is a degreaser. My husband uses it in his workshop. And then, you know, you start playing and see what you can do. <laughs> you know, sometimes life can really be very interesting. The more you play, the more you find out, the more you experiment. So I kind of like that. Do you like that there? No. Thing is, I like the letter. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep the letter and then we can always build up our paper or our pages later on. I'll keep that separate so that I don't lose it because I have a habit of losing things on my desk. Okay, let's see what else can we use. Here's the other one. Oops, sorry about that. Yikes. All right, I'll hold that still. All right, so here we have a lot of yellow. I kind of like that. I like how this really shows up nicely. I just tend to want to, I don't really measure, I just see where it kind of leads me. And then you can just patch things up as best as you can.
So the reason why I started making this um, art junk journal was to have all of my kind of ideas, uh, artistic ideas, see how it sort of still gives off a bit. It's okay, if that bothers you, wear gloves, it's fine. Um, but the idea is to have uh, a place where I can try all these different techniques and things like that. Uh, it really started out a place to put all of my, um, whatchamacallits, um, my gel plates, <laughs> my gel plate prints, my gel prints, I guess. Um, I needed a place for them all, so I, I just really like making gel prints. And then, you know, I didn't know what to do with them. So, what do you do with them all? Once you start making them, it's very difficult to stop, but it's a lot of fun to sort of create these kinds of books. It's basically art journaling. Ooh, which side do I like better? Yeah, maybe that way. Okay. We will go with that. So I've been watching a lot of videos, you know, older techniques, uh, new, new to me techniques. They've been around for a while, which is, you know, fabulous. But when they first came out, I wasn't doing a lot of this stuff. So it's kind of nice to be able to um, play, try different things, you know, stuff that's been around for a while. It's okay to try it. See for yourself what works, what doesn't work, which is kind of cool. And then just having a bit of a play. You can overlap these, or you can do anything else you want. But I really like the um, the look of it. Let's see. Let's set that aside for a second. So I try not to go into the groove too much. And again, you know, if these lines are too bothersome. You can obviously fill them in with something else. Kind of like that. Not everything has to have the citrusol uh, melting the ink um, dissipation. So but I really like these turquoises and yellows. I've been playing with um, my ink pads with the same color, so it's kind of cool how when you sort of get stuck in a color combination, how you just tend to want to use it everywhere. Make sure that still closes. Yeah, so we're good there. Now I could have painted the background if I wanted to, but I'm okay with this. Let's see. That's a very large block there. I think we'll do one across. And sometimes it'll be a little bit larger than the page. That's okay too. Because you can always go in and trim it with some scissors. Or you could leave a little bit of space. However you feel like doing it. This is a good way to fill up your um, art junk journal, I think. <laughs> and these little pieces you can use, you know, uh, on smaller collages. You can just fill it in as you go. Just really like how this yellow turned out. Let's see, how can we do this? 
it's okay to go crooked. And then we need a little bit off the edge. So if this is too similar to that and you didn't want that, you could just flip it over to the other side. I'll just create a little bit of a different edge because you're flipping it. But that's okay. And we will just do it a different way. Sometimes it's just filling in the little parts and pieces. So I think we'll just go this way. I mean, it's pretty much abstract anyway because of the, um, the backgrounds. We've split everything up. So it's okay in this case. It's just the colors that I'm looking for at this point. Oops. Although that is quite pretty too. And we can always trim that a little bit. All right, this one will get flipped and trimmed. Take some scissors to it. Uh, scissors would be helpful. You could rip it, of course, if you want to. That's okay. Scissors sometimes work just as well. And we have a really long piece. Again, we could use these smaller pieces to fill in the areas. All we're looking for is just different color combinations, just to fill it in. I'll sort of keep it in place. My fingers are now sticky, so it's like the paper doesn't want to stay put. <laughs> similar to that one so we want the other side again we can trim it off with scissors One long piece. I don't know. <laughs> you know what? We're going to do a long piece and another piece. So it's just basically patchwork. And then the same here. It is not bad. So you can really see how photogenic this whole uh, page is. So it's really kind of cool. Now, I don't know what Citrus Solve will do in the long term, or even, you know, the any of these Citrus degreasers, what they will do in the long term to your papers. So I would not use it with, um, like, precious photographs or anything like that. But you can most definitely use it for something like this. So let's see. I kind of like that. Or do I want to save it? 
Maybe we'll just save it. <laughs> Again, you know, it, it's open to interpretation, any which way you want to do this. From here, you know, we could do a focal point or we could leave it as a background, like I did a lot of these other ones with just all of my different papers. An art junk journal is basically that. It's whatever art you create, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, from magazines or cutouts or whatever. Uh, it's a junk journal that you can put together with creative ideas. That's the best way I can describe it. But I kind of like that uh, I discovered something old to be new again. Um, something that was available in my home already that I could use. Uh, whether you use this one or the one that I decanted from um, another container, which is basically the same. But check out your hardware store. Uh, look for a all citrus cleaner degreaser. 100% citrus extracts and uh, in a spray can is probably your best bet because it works really well. It deposits a lot of product and it really um, makes the ink run on the uh, magazine pages. Again, um, if you have uh, the National Geographic available at your um, thrift stores, by all means use it um, or buy a magazine just to try it. It's not going to go to waste because you can use it for many different things. And um, if, you know, you don't want to spend too much money, then um, subscribe to some of the free magazines that you get. So, you know, anything with photographs that have lots of ink on the paper, like the Vintages magazine that I subscribe to. Yeah, that works for me and um, it might work for you. I love experimenting with things like this. Um, this looks really interesting to me. What I'm going to do next with it, I have no idea. But I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see what the next one brings. Bye, guys.